everyone today I'm going to be dividing dahlias and potting some up and I know that dividing dahlias is something that worries people and they're not sure how to do it um, my sister was here this weekend and she asked me to show her how to do it so I thought actually it would be a good thing to make a video so that other people who have questions about it could also have a look at how I divide my dahlias now a lot of people will divide their dahlias in the autumn when they dig them up because at that point in time some of the little eyes that you're looking for which I'll show you later are um, more pronounced I don't tend to do this because it's freezing cold and damp and miserable and by the time I've got them all packed away there's no way I would have wanted to divide them and also I find that once they start waking up and warming up in the spring actually you can see a lot of the eyes then anyway and I don't want to be dividing dahlias if they're actually just going to mold in storage <laughs> so you know then I've wasted time dividing those dahlias if they didn't survive storage so I prefer to wait to see what survives storage and then divide them in the spring as I'm about to pot them up this is this is my reasoning and my theory as I said many people would do it the other way around and you just need to do what's best for you there's no right or wrong and um, you learn through experience so what I'm going to try to do is some close-ups with the other camera that I've got here so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about so these are the bags that I store my dahlias in in sawdust so if you see little bits of sawdust flying around that's just from storage and I have a tag or two in each bag this one is Cornell Bronze, which would be a beautiful dahlia. So, I'm going to take the tags off it because I don't need the tags. And I'm just going to describe to you um, what we can see here on the dahlia. So these are last year's stems. They're old stems. And these are the tubers, which is the starchy goodness that every dahlia needs to grow and then this area around the top where last year's stems were this is called um, the crown and then the area that joins each tuber up to the crown area is called the neck and right at the top of the neck on the crown is where you'll find the eyes and this part of the tuber the starchy chunky part of the tuber is needed in order for your dahlia to grow but without an eye your dahlia won't produce any flowers so you need to make sure that there's an eye on every bit of starchy clump so if it comes off and it's just you know for instance if it comes off, I'm going to chop this bit off anyway because I don't need it so if it comes off and you've got a bit of a tuber that's just the starchy bit and you don't have an eye attached to it it's not going to grow and you can just put it in the compost so the tools that I use to divide my dahlias are my Falco 2's great secateurs I also um, use my Falco snips which are the 310's I use these a lot and I also use a blade and I have a Geppetto blade which I find is excellent so it's just a knife but you could use a kitchen knife or I've seen people using you know the knives that you cut large branches of trees off with um, so just use something sharp and clean and if you have a moldy tuber or something that's diseased then um, don't use the same implement again without cleaning it with some alcohol first you need to disinfect it so you don't spread the diseases so this first tuber that I'm going to divide, I'm going to hold it off to the side here because I've got another camera here and I want to make sure that it's highlighted. So this tuber that I'm going to divide has already started waking up and you can see where it's waking up. I'm going to use my slips to point to it, but you can see here that there is a sprout coming up a shoot coming up and there's a very tiny eye waking up there but these areas that are slightly raised I'm going to tilt it slightly in the hope that you can see these areas that are slightly raised this is also an eye and this area here is also an eye and it's got like a little raised bump there and so this particular area so ignore the stem but this crowny bit here has got at least three eyes 
and this one, this crowny area here, has got one definite eye, but if I turn the tuber around this side, you can see that there's another eye right here is just starting to sprout. And there may well be more, but I'm not going to be able to see them until I've started cutting. And there are various ways to do this. You could, you know, go at it with your secateurs or your knife, and it's really up to you. When you divide your dahlia tuber, you are not going to get an eye for every single one of these. So if you divide it down and down, you are going to lose some. There'll be like sacrificial tubers that you lose. So for every starchy tuber, there just won't be an eye. Um, the other thing I should say is that with your dahlia tubers, very often when you buy a dahlia tuber, you'll be sent a clump that's got at least one eye on it, and it may have just one starchy tuber or it may have three or four starchy tubers and so long as they're all attached to the crown then that's a good healthy um, purchase. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's just one tuber or whether there are three or four um, or more. I mean maybe you've bought a fantastically huge clump um, but with dahlias um, I'm particularly referring to Sarah Ravett here, but I've heard it from many other sources that with dahlias, you don't want more than five shoots on each dahlia plant, because if you keep the shoot number down to five, then those five stems are going to grow more vigorously and more healthily, and they'll be stronger than if you, for instance, allowed maybe seven or eight shoots to grow on each clump. So you do eventually want to divide your dahlias, like you won't want to keep the clump going forever and ever because the quality of your flowers and stems is going to diminish over time. And this applies to, you know, home gardeners like myself or flower farmers, I should think. Um, but definitely as a home gardener, you know, I want to divide this clump now because I know that I'm going to get more than five stems on here. It's also slightly breaking apart anyway. Um, so, I'm going to show you how to divide the dahlia now. So what I'm going to do first, and a lot of people do this, is they just clean up the little hairy wispy bits because it's easier to see what you're doing if you don't have any of this old stuff hanging around. I'm going to get rid of this. So something as little and tiny as that is not really going to produce anything wonderful. And I'm just going to turn it over and just make sure that there's you know, nothing in my way here. I'm going to be able to see what I'm doing when I come to divide it. So, I am actually, with this particular one, because it's coming apart here, I'm going to wiggle it a bit and just, oh, there we are. So this one has separated without me having to cut anything at all. And I do tend to cut off these wispy hairy bits here primarily because I don't nothing like that is going to produce a dahlia and it's they're you know I mean they're soft and dried up they're not going to do anything they're not going to help the plant and I don't want them rotting in the soil so I'm just going to bin that and then the other thing I do when I'm dividing my dahlias is so this one on the end this is broken in fact it's just come off in my hands don't want that and then the other thing that I'm looking for is to see whether there's any mould or rotten bits. And this is just like a dried up bit of, you know, stalk or something. And I don't want that. So I'm just going to take that off there because I don't need that and I don't want it rotting in the ground. And then what I've got here is a nice clump that I could divide again if I wanted to because I've got a shoot growing on this side and I've definitely got an eye here and with a bit more searching I could probably find more eyes. There's probably an eye there and an eye there and so if I wanted to I could divide this again by keeping, making sure that the eyes I can definitely see going to be attached to a tuber. So this is a good tuber here and this is an excellent tuber here. So what I'm going to do is take my knife and I'm going to 
cut here, making sure I keep this shoot here and this shoot here, and I'm just going to cut through here. And you can, you know, use any method you like. So I'm just sort of splitting it like that. And there we go. So what I have now is I have last year's stalk, I have one healthy shoot, I have a slightly wobbly tuber, I'm not going to worry about that too much, and then I've got a very strong tuber, and I'm pretty sure that there are some more eyes on here, but I've definitely got one. So this is a very healthy tuber, and then this one, can you see how I've had to sacrifice that? That is too wobbly, it's not attached to anything, and there is, there are no eyes there, so that just goes in the compost. And then this bit here has definitely got an eye here. I mean, this bit, you don't need to keep that. You can just take that off. But this is, I could take this bit off here, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to, you know, there's a bit of goodness in there. I'm going to leave that. That's my second tuber. And then we're on to the second chunk here. Now you can see that this one has been cut in half before. So this would have been, this would have been the mother tuba, the original tuba that you were given or you bought and this one is not going to produce anything good and so I'm going to take this one off. I'm not interested in keeping this one at all. And I'm just going to snip it off and these ones that are attached to it aren't going to come to anything. So that's compost. Okay, so here's a really good example of what to look out for. So this is not really attached anymore at the neck, so I'm going to take that off. But can you see how these are the two stems? This is the eye that we saw previously, but if I turn it over, there are shoots underneath. So always look out for shoots underneath, because you may find a nice surprise. In fact, you probably will on almost all of your dahlias you'll find something underneath. So, this shoot here is part of this tuber and may well be part of this tuber. So I need to try to keep this part of the crown attached to these tubers. And then this is the other area that's got lots of eyes and some tubers. So I am going to, with this eye here and these here, I'm going to go through here and this is going to be sacrificial. Don't want that one. And then I'm going to go straight through here, keeping these separate. And you can choose whatever takes your fancy, whatever you feel safest with to make that cut. So I'm just going up and there's another eye there. So I've got lucky with this one. So can you see how they're sort of intertwined? So this is a lovely piece of dahlia tuber and it's got at least one, two, three eyes attached to it. I'm just going to tidy it up and get rid of this old bit here. We don't need that. Now I could divide that more if I wanted to. I could come in here and cut through there because that's an eye attached to a tuber. In fact, why don't I do that just to show you how I do it. So, so there's an eye, this darker brown bit, this swelling, and there's an eye, this swelling here, and this is an eye. So I need to make sure there's a tuber attached to this bit, and then I can cut through there. So, here, I've probably got lots of eyes for these two tubers and then this looks a little bit ropey but it will definitely grow something. I'm not a hundred percent sure about this one but that could well be an eye there as well. So I mean this looks like it's had a bit of rot over time but it's fine. It's not soft and squishy. I'm not worried about that. So that's another one. So I've now got four pieces from this one dahlia. And this is the other piece where I found little shoots underneath and I found a second one as I was cutting it. So because that's a shoot here 
and that shoot there, I can just go straight through this area here and make another one. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a bit wobbly, so it's not attached properly, and I don't want any of that. So I'm going to go, let's move these out of the way. I'm going to go straight through here. So I've got one there and one there. And I'm just going to go straight through here. Trying not to damage the tubers too much. So there I have another healthy one. Oh, I actually have two eyes on that. And then I've got one eye there. So, I mean, this is a thing. You can't see them always, but there was an eye there as well. So I have the ability with this one, if I'm very careful, to cut through there. Now I've got one eye on this one, and I have one eye on this one. And here I have an eye, there's an eye there, and I'm not sure that I'm going to take that down any further than that. I might just chop off last year's stem, we don't need that. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dahlias just from that one clump. Now, I wouldn't, as a home gardener, I wouldn't cut mine down quite this much um, every year. The, uh, it's just not something that I need to do, which is why I suppose my clump was a bit bigger, is because I just haven't cut it down every year. So I might divide it in half if I feel the clumps very big. But what happens is when you plant it up and um, either straight into your soil when the frosts are passed, or um, as I do, I plant them up now, um, which is about a month before my frosts have passed, and I put them into pots. And then as they start growing in pots, they'll produce shoots. And the moment that I see more than five shoots on a daily tuber, I just knock one of those shoots off. And I can show you how to do that in a later video, but I don't have any ready today to show you. Um, but because you have to sacrifice that shoot anyway, there's no point having loads of eyes. Because you're going to sacrifice some of them um, at the end of the day anyway. So what I'm going to do is divide some more dahlias um, and just go through another one or two perhaps. And then I'll just show you how I pot them up. So this dahlia is called Acapulco. And you can see that this dahlia is super active already. It's got loads and loads of purple shoots. I can see some more hiding in there underneath. So again, I'm just going to take off all the hairy bits so that we can see what we're doing. And also because I just don't want them in the ground. And I'm going to take off the really small tubers that won't do anything. So having studied this one, I think I've got definitely um, one set of eyes here and I've got another set of eyes here. So I'm going to try and separate these two. So with the Acapulco, they're pretty solidly joined and I can't just yank this one apart in the same way I could with the other one. So um, I'm going to go underneath this one and through here and I'm going to just give it a sharp stab. And as I've said before, you will lose some of your tubers by doing this but it doesn't matter because all you're interested in is making sure at least one tuber is attached to the eyes so i have got i'm trying to just wheedle them out in the hope Something is still attached. That one.
Okay, right, so I've got sacrificial lamb in the bin and then I've got a nice looking clump here with a couple of eyes, it's got at least, well that's got at least five eyes on it. This is a little bit wonky but I think it's well enough attached that I'm going to leave it. So that's one clump and I'm not going to divide that anymore because I just don't need to. And then this one is still quite big. I'm just getting rid of that bit because it's a bit broken. I don't want to keep anything that's broken. So this one's still a bit big. So I'm going to try and divide it again. So this stem here goes to a crown at the bottom that's got um, eyes on the bottom. So I'm going to again try to just wiggle this around a bit and see whether I can loosen it and just keep three clumps. In fact I'm going to go through there I think. I'll get my secateurs to that. Okay, I'm going to be brave. I can see that I just knocked an eye off, but I'm not too concerned because we have lots. So, I've sort of managed. This has got no eyes and this has got no eyes. So they're going in the bin. And then this is damaged and I'm concerned that that is going to rot in the ground. So that's going in the bin. But what I have here is a clump with at least four eyes on it. I am going to chop off last year's stem and that looks good and then I've got a clump here with loads of eyes on it and everything else looks good. This one, so I do just take off the ones that are a bit weak and wobbly. I don't want them because they'll rot and that's not good. You don't want your plant rotting in the ground. So this one I could divide again, but I've got three clumps and I think this is good for me. And that's how I would leave it as a home gardener. If I didn't want to give any to friends, I didn't need any extras, I would just leave it like this. Okay, I'm just going to do one more, see whether I've got a complicated one here that I can show you. This is one that hasn't done so well in storage, but I think it's going to be fine. There should be enough good tubers in this one for me to be able to salvage something. And I think it's important to see that not everything makes it through. So this one is called Mingus Alex. It's a lovely purple dahlia. So it's a little bit shriveled. Can you see how some of these just don't look so good? Hopefully you can see, and in fact this is actually a really good example where there is an eye halfway up the stem. So it's another reason why I don't cut my stems all the way down. I always leave a bit of the neck of the stem from the previous year because sometimes you get an eye actually on that stem and that's cool. Um, but what I've got here is a lot of eyes. So these dark bits here, these are the eyes. And then on this side, I've got an eye here and an eye here and an eye here got a big lump here that's got at least three dark areas. Those are eyes. These are eyes here. So I've got eyes here and here. So actually this clump really needs divided because it's going to have way too many eyes. But what I need to do is make sure that there are solid um, tubers attached to each one. So it looks a bit ropey but I think it's going to be okay. So again with this one I'm going to go down between the stems and try to separate it this way and hopefully at some point it should wiggle apart. So again some people think that this is easier to do when you've just dug the dahlia up 
and um, that's a possibility. I definitely have done it in the past where I've divided my dahlias as I've dug them, but some years you just don't have time. Or the inclination if it's too cold. Right, so I'm just going to try and untangle these from here. And you don't have to do that, you could just rip it apart, it's fine. But um, what I've got here is some really good solid tubers. And then this one is, I mean, that's, can you see that that's all dried up and it's nothing? So I'm definitely going to get rid of that bit because I don't want that. And then this is very dry here too. But actually the rest of this is looking pretty good. So I've got eyes here in this area, an eye here, and an eye here, and that doesn't actually... I'm going to take this bit off because I think this is like the... So can you see how it's really old and a bit shriveled and it's a bit hollow? So this would have been a mother tuber at some point and they do not sustain the plant at all. You just don't want that because they basically, they end up going hollow and rotting. So get rid of it. So here I have a lovely tuber. Now, if when you're planting this, it doesn't fit well into a pot and you just don't want to use up that much compost or you don't want to dig a hole that's that big, you could easily chop off these two tubers here and just make put them in a smaller pot um, but so long as you're keeping the eyes all the eyes attached to at least one tuber you can choose to chop off a tuber if you want to so let's look at this bit here so again I've got a whole crown that is full of eyes up here I'm hoping that you can see those and this does not look good this looks like this was probably can you see how it's rotted a bit that must have been a mother tuber at some point so i'm just going to get rid of that to make my life easier so it's gnarlier and it's got like a different texture to the new tubers i get rid of that this can you see how that's like nothing that's weak and shriveled so I'm definitely chopping that off we don't want any of those bits they'll just rot so again I think these this is an old tuber I mean I obviously didn't divide this last year so this can you see how it's just a different texture to the newer ones so I'm going to get rid of the mother tuber because that is just going to rot this year there we go and this is also a mother tuber this fat lump here that's got lots of stuff coming out of the bottom that would have been another old tuber and we don't want it so tidying it up a bit so now what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to split it in half. So I need to decide where to split it. So I want to keep these eyes maybe attached to those tubers and these eyes attached to these. So I think I am going to go in with my snips. This is why I like the snips because they're just more accurate. And then use my knife to go through the centre. I'm just wiggling it a bit. Okay, so I'm not sure about this particular tube here. This feels very soft and not good. So I've got at least one solid tuber, two solid tubers, three. So I've got a good amount of decent tubers that one's broken enough to sustain the life of all of these eyes here and I'm just going to take 
bits off that I don't want because I my worry with bits like that is that they'll just rot and then your chiba will struggle and not be healthy so that's my second bit that's nothing and then this is my third bit and again I think this looks like a dodgy old tuber to me I may have to take that off and then I've got the eyes here and sufficient tubers for a healthy long life I'm going to get rid of this one too because it's soft now on to potted dahlias I have got a variety of pots and I have got my normal peat free compost that I use all the time it's the Melcourt silver grow peat free compost recommended by the RHS so let's pot up the dahlias that I divided a few minutes ago so let's for instance take this particular one here what you want to make sure when you're potting up your dahlias is that you bury the tuber and what you also want to make sure is that you're not squeezing your tuber into a pot that it doesn't quite fit into and if you don't want to divide your dahlia and it's a really big clump then just don't put it up early wait until your frosts are over and then put it straight into the ground you could pot this tuber up in here just by putting the tuber in and putting lots of compost in but the problem with doing that is that part of your tuber the crown is still sticking up and also there won't be quite enough compost around it to create the goodness to sustain it for a month so what you want to do is make sure that you're putting your tuber into a pot that's big enough so when you're planting up your dahlias you want to bury the tuber if you wanted to take cuttings, which is a whole other video um, that I will do at some point, if you wanted to take cuttings, you would leave the crown and the eyes proud. But you want to get the tuber into the compost because that will make sure the tuber stays moist enough to sprout and it will be able to form decent roots. So I'm not leaving mine any prouder than that. Even though there was a shoot underneath, it will find its way to the surface. And then for the bigger tubers, I'm just going to use a bigger pot. I basically want the tubers to be under the soil. So you don't have to fill your pot up to the top, but you want to make sure that the tubers are underneath the compost. So when you've potted up your dahlias, give them a really good water. I mean really water them properly and then let them drain and then put them somewhere to start sprouting. I don't leave mine outside because I'm worried about frosts but also the slugs and the snails will get to your nice new shoots. So I put mine into my seed room that's just a storeroom where I grow the seeds and they all start their sprouting life in there and then as soon as I see sprouts I bring them outside and they spend the night in my kitchen and then during the day I carry them outside onto the patio where they can be exposed to um, you know proper sunshine and if it rains they get watered and you know they they get exposed to the elements and start hardening off but I do bring them in at night um, mostly to avoid the slugs and the snails but also um, just in case there is a frost one night and then I will plant them all out in May because we'll have had our last frost by the end by the middle of May um, so your dahlias will start sprouting at different times so you may pot them all up on the same day maybe you've got 10 dahlias and you'll pot them all up on the same day and then a week later you'll see one sprouting and you'll wonder why the rest aren't and you'll start worrying don't dig around in them you don't need to dig around in them um, they will all sprout at different times even the same dahlia tuber so I've potted up uh, um, what was this Cornell bronze I potted up Cornell bronze here and Cornell bronze here and Cornell bronze here and I've done all of these on exactly the same day all three pots on exactly the same day and they will all sprout on different days they will just take their time some may not wake up for four weeks but they will eventually wake up 
unless you ever water them, so don't over water them because then they'll rot. Um, so I only water them the once until I see sprouts. And when I see sprouts, then I put my finger in the soil to check whether it's damp and whether or not it needs water, just the same way you would with any pot plant. Um, so these dahlias that have all sprouted, you can see various different stages. So this one has clearly been sprouted for a while and this one here has got one, two, three, four, at least five shoots. So we don't want any more on that one. Um, but you can see that they're all at varying stages. This one is just poking through now, but I can see one, two, three there. Um, so this is basically what happens. And then I've got other trays where I haven't got to any shoots at all. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful and interesting and maybe um, it's giving you the confidence to try to divide your dahlias yourself. Uh, you don't have to divide your dahlias if you don't want to unless they're getting to be enormous clumps and then it will do them the world of good to be split just the same way you would divide a perennial in a flower bed. Anyway that's it for today. If you've enjoyed this video then please do subscribe to my channel, hit the button below and the notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Planes. Love planes. sprout planes 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 planes